Brothers and sisters, Brother John here, watchman for that great day. We are fast approaching the day that we will be raptured. Now, I can't guarantee that we will be out of here on first fruits, but I can very much say this, that according to what I'm feeling, that I've never felt before, this, this feeling that I'm having is that we are out of here on first fruits on uh, Easter Sunday or before even Easter Sunday. Now what I'd like to do is read to you from, uh, from Matthew and show you something here that I've been seeing in my studies. And that is this. First of all, I'd like to, I'd like to um, let you all know that I'm aware that the U.S. has just recently, about an hour ago, um, bombed um, uh, a part of Afghanistan where uh, Taliban and um, uh, uh, ISIS apparently are, and, and it's to the MOAB bomb, the mother of all bombs is the one that they used in Iraq. Well, this one was has just been used. It's a 20,000 pound bomb and it's uh, uh, it bursts in the air and creates an overpressure which crushes the tunnel systems of the of the enemy. So this is what has just recently been dropped. That was about an hour or so ago. So just with that, we know that things are ramping up and things are getting hot. There's all kinds of things going on with North Korea. There's supposedly 150,000 troops, Chinese, um, that are on the borders of, uh, of uh, uh, North Korea at this time. Uh, there's ships, many uh, uh, aircraft, there's an aircraft carrier and uh, nuclear subs over there. There's a lot of things going on and they're about to break, brothers and sisters. So the thing is that we're not, a fear, not afraid. We're not a afraid of any of this. Wars, rumors of wars, okay? We're not afraid of it. The rapture is about to happen. We know that as we get closer to that time, there's going to be earth-shaking events, including most likely and maybe possibly a one or two earthquakes in the next uh, couple days, all right? So be watching, be waiting, be alive, have your lamps trimmed, <laughs> All right, get ready because we're going out. This is it. We're going out to meet the bridegroom. Hallelujah. All right. I'll blow my, my shofar at the end of this video just for all of you. So warn you, warn your dogs. <laughs> dogs and cats and animals. Put your headphones on so they don't blow their eardrums out. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go to Matthew 27, verse uh, 50 through 53. And I'd like to read this to show you what I found just recently. And I'd like to bring a couple other things to your attention. So here we are. Jesus, when he had, he's on the cross. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So he gave up the ghost. There's now just a dead body on the cross. All right. The, the spirit is gone. He is, for all practical purposes, that body is dead. All right. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two. All right. From the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake. So on the cross, when he gives up the ghost, the earth quakes. So there's an earthquake at the time that he's on the cross. There's one, all right? One earthquake. And the rocks rent, okay. And here we are in 52. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Now, understand something. Sounds like they arose up out of their graves and went into the city, because that's the next verse. But they arose, that word arose means to awake. So, this is the picture I'm getting, and I might be a little humorous about it, but I mean, I'm, I'm all uh, very serious about what might have happened at that time. So watch me. Let me see. I'm in camera. So we got a guy, he's, you know, just one guy, we'll picture one guy, you know, and he's dead. He's dead. There's, he's in the grave. He's not talking. He's dead, right? The earthquake happens. All of a sudden, he, his eyes open up. He's laying in his tomb. He's like, right? What's going on here? I'm awake. I'm alive. I'm alive, okay? So bear with me. 
So, the where it talks about in 52, the saints which slept arose. Now notice it says saints. Probably these are the people that believe on Jesus, all right? And they happen to have died before Jesus went to the cross, all right? They could have been in there a day. They could have been in there, you know, whatever, three years, whatever. They could have been in there for a while, all right? But they knew about Jesus, so there was a whole thing about him, right? But once he started his, it could have been many people died maybe up to the three and a half year or three years that Jesus had his ministry, all right, during the time. There was people dying every day, even in all, all in the land of Jerusalem and Israel, right, all around there, all around those areas. All right. So... And the graves were open, of course, and many of the bodies of the saints, right, that knew Jesus, that slept, awoke, right? The next verse says, And came out of the graves, and here's the kicker, after his resurrection, which means they didn't come out right away as soon as the, as soon as the earthquake happened, they didn't come out right away. They more or less hung out in their little tombs, in their graves, until Jesus was raised at resurrection day. When Jesus came out of the tomb, then they came out of their tombs, went into the city, and presented themselves to people. All right? That was a miracle that no one had seen before, I'm sure. They, remember, we can look at Lazarus being brought back from the dead, and some people saw that, but not everybody. But when people go into the city after being dead, and these are loved ones and friends and family, and they go in and show themselves, then that's a miracle. Here's your dead uncle or your brother or sister or whatever standing there presenting themselves to you as a whole person. Most likely, and it's just a thought, you know, don't kill the messenger, it's just my thought, most likely in glorified bodies. Yeah, okay? Jesus was in his glorified body at that time, right? So maybe they had their glorified bodies, all right? Okay. Then, from the counting of the Omer, which is first fruits, and that happens to be right now, first fruits will be Sunday morning. That's the day, all right? Now we can go into the detail. Remember, Israel time, New York time is seven hours, you know, Israel seven hours ahead of New York time. So we could do a lot with that. Anyway, I'm sticking with this thought for now. So on first fruits, all right, there's, there's a whole, there's two connections here. The, one, the first one I want to bring to you is what Jesus said about Jonah. Jesus said, this wicked and adulterous generation seeks a sign, but no sign will be given except for the sign of Jonah. Jonah, Jonah and Jesus, all right, use the two as a parallel. Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days. Jesus was in the belly of the, of the earth three days, right? Three days, three nights, both of them. Jonah was uh, spit out by the whale. I believe he was resurrected. Okay, you don't have to believe that, but I believe when he was swallowed by the fish, he died. All right? He got killed. He's not making little, he's not sitting on a float down there making, uh, you know, fish sandwiches, all right, for three days. He was probably dead. You know, just a thought, all right? Maybe he was alive that whole time. Who knows? At any rate, it says the fish vomited him up, right? So, the idea is, Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days, and I'm believing he was resurrected on the third day, just like Jesus. Jesus in the belly of the earth three days, he's resurrected on the third day, okay? So there's the identification right there. So the evil and wicked generation that seeks a sign and no sign will be given, the connection is Jesus and Jonah had the same uh, example, all right? The same type and shadow. So... Jonah was resurrected and went into Nineveh and preached there and told them they had 40 days to repent. Jesus then from the time of first fruits resurrection, the third day, goes and walks this earth for 40 days. Now here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Jesus said, greater things that you will do, greater things that he that knows me, in other words, he that knows Jesus, greater things will he do than I did, meaning himself. So you understand there's a 40-day period of time that Jesus walked the earth that we're going to have the same type and shadow of walking this earth for 40 days, all right, and doing things greater than he did. That is the Great Commission, brothers and sisters. That is the, and we're being our glorified body. So greater things than he did when he was in his glorified body, we will do. Understand that. That's, that's a thought, all right? That's a thought. It's a, it's a, 
pretty solidly been coming at me in my studies and thoughts a lot in the past months. But this is really starting to take hold that it's possible that we're going to be here for 40 days, just like Jesus. And then at the end of the 40 days, we'll leave. We'll be uh, caught up in the clouds just like Jesus. All right? Now, remember also on the first fruits, all right, which is Easter Sunday, all right, on first fruits, that's also when the 144,000 will be sealed, okay? Now, I don't know if it's going to take that day or if they're going to be sealed over the over the period of time of those 40 days, I'm not sure, but that's very possible. Because it says in Revelation 7, it says, hold back the four winds and let not, you know, the destruction happen, okay, till, um, till we seal the 144,000. That could be a period of time over the next 40 days. You understand? So, who knows how it works? All I'm saying is, remember the first fruits. Remember who the first fruits are? the 144,000 or 12,000 from each tribe that have been redeemed from this earth. They are the first fruits that follow Jesus wherever he goes. All right? So we have that much. So what I'm what I'm looking at here is if there's a rapture which is majorly majorly high, ridiculously high feeling that it's going to happen on first fruits and there's all kinds of confirmations coming in about it is going to happen. God's not trying to take us by surprise, brothers and sisters. He wants us to be ready with our lamps trimmed. The wise virgins had their lamps trimmed and were wise and went out to meet him. Be rejoicing. Be expecting this thing to happen. The worst that can happen is you'll, you'll be a little dismayed that it didn't happen. But I'm going to share with you that we don't have to go through another summer to get to September is what I'm going to tell you. And you're going to see something. So, the idea is if we're raptured on first fruits, all right, we're resurrected on first fruits, just like Jesus. Um, we're sealed or whatever. The 144,000 are sealed, maybe over the next 40 days, maybe all in that one day. But we're we're resurrected together, okay? We have a 40-day period of the Great Commission to take place where we'll do things greater than even Jesus did. And being the body that's covering the whole earth at that time for that 40 days. Now watch, because we're supposed to count from the first fruits wave offering on, um, on April 16th, which that's the first day of count. And that's what they call counting the Omer. The Omer is counted for seven Sabbaths, that's 49 days. The 50th day is the feast, the first day of the Feast of Weeks, okay? That refers to Daniel 9.24, that's 70 weeks. That's the 70 Shabuas right there. 70 Feast of Weeks are determined. So this um, June the 3rd is the day before the 4th. The 4th is the first day of that 70th Shavuot, the 70th Feast of Weeks. You understand? So the 70th Feast of Weeks happens on June the 4th. But the day before is the 49th count, seven Sabbaths from first fruits. Seven Sabbaths is, is the, 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 from the first fruits wave offering of the barley. The barley is what's winnowed, all right, tossed up into the air, and the chaff blows away. The rapture happens in that, in that sense. We're going to be tossed up in the air, sna snatched away, and caught up into the air, all right, whatever that means, different dimension, whatever. But that's the idea. The chaff, which is this body, blows away. All right? So, but we have our new bodies. As soon as we're absent from this body, we have our new bodies with the Lord. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So we'll be caught up into the air, winnowed, if you will, during the time of the feast, the harvest of, of uh, barley. But that harvest goes for 49 days, seven Sabbaths. Okay? On the 50th day... That is the first day of the, of the first fruits wave offering for uh, wheat. Wheat is the only, uh, it's the grain that needs the tribulum. The tribulum looks like a forked tool that, that when it comes through the, the grain, the heads, it snaps the heads off. It goes through and it snaps off or cuts off the heads of the wheat. All right. Remember the parable of the wheat and tares and the tares and they wanted to pull the tares up and and the owner of the uh, of the 
the farm said, no, don't do it now. We'll, we'll wait for the harvest, all right? Then what are they going to do? They're going to bundle up the tares, put them in bundles, and burn them in a fire, and the wheat gets stored in the barn. So what I'm telling you is from first fruits, if the rapture happens on first fruits, we're here for 40 days. You understand how, how type and shadow work 100%? And what happened in Jonah's time? He went to the Gentiles and they repented. Well, this time we're all over the world and we're going to Gentiles and Jews alike. And if they repent, if they ask the Lord Jesus into their heart from that time, before the first day of the tribulation, the tribulum wheat harvest, all right, which will be the 4th of June, that's the first day, of the 70th Feast of Weeks being fulfilled, Daniel 9, 24 through 27, which only leaves you a single seven left. There's only one seven left from the time of the wheat harvest. All right? Because it's done. The 70 Feast of Weeks, the, Sh the Shabuah, has been fulfilled. The 70 Shabuah, 70 Feast of Weeks, is fulfilled on June the 4th. All right? That's the first day. The next day is June the 5th. Guess what? June the 5th, 50 years ago, from June the 5th this year, will be the 1967 Six-Day War. I believe that's the time that the war is going to start with North Korea, all these other things, maybe sooner. But it seems like there's going to be a, a time of holding back. This is what Revelation, let me read it, Revelation 7 tells us. Let me get my little magnifying glass here. Bear with me a second. Right? It says, uh, after these things, remember this is after the uh, sixth seal, right? After the sixth seal earthquake. We're talking about two earthquakes. There was an earthquake when Jesus was on the cross, and there's also an earthquake when they go to the tomb the next morning, all right? On that day, resurrection day, right? First fruits. There's a great earthquake, it says, in Matthew 28. All right, so you need to read that. You need to get the connection with the great earthquake that happens when the sun is dark and the moon doesn't give its light, because that's most likely the sixth seal. All right. Now I don't know if that's the the, the necessary the uh, the mechanics and the layout of it, but that is what the sixth seal says. And there was a great earthquake. Every island, every mountain was moved out of its place. All right. Remember what I showed you a minute ago with the guys in the in the coffins and tombs, right? Well, they're in there, but they're going to get woke up, right? And at the waking up of these, they're going to be raised up. And then the dead in Christ raised first, then we which are alive and remain get transformed, transformed and caught up in the air as well. So over here in chapter 7 of Revelation, it says, And after all these things I saw the four angels standing in the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on a or in the sea, nor in any tree. It sounds like winds are basically, I look at them as being destructive winds. They're holding them back, okay? There's a holding back. And I'm going to tell you something to refer to it in Daniel 9, 24, where it says, right, where it says, uh, i got to read it, sorry, bear with me. Seventy weeks are determined upon my thy people, Right? Remember, thy people are Daniel's people. The body of Christ had not been born born yet. This was a 500-year prop. This prophecy was given to Daniel back then. And so it was talking about his people. All right? So Daniel's people, the Jews, and upon the holy city of Jerusalem to finish the transgression and to make an end. All right? So to finish, the word finish is restrain, hold back, stay. The word transgression is, uh, is nation against nation. There's only one other nation I know of that wants to push Israel into the sea. And remember, one of these nations is Israel. One of these nations is Jerusalem. The only other nation I know would be the Esau uh, relationship or the uh, Ishmael relationship or now we can say the Islamic relationship. That's who that nation is. The Islamic nations want to push that brother of theirs, half-brother, into the sea so that it, it's not found anymore, okay? So 
This is the idea. So at the end, it shall speak and not lie. I'm telling you, this is the truth. This truth, this Bible here, is what Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3 says. At the end, it shall speak and not lie, although it tarry, wait for it. The vision is yet for an appointed time. This is the appointed time, brothers and sisters. The types and shadows are showing us that. Um, the blessing of the Lord be upon you all. You know, my heart is is overflowing with the with the the sober uh, uh, feel, the soberness of of the comfort of God. The Spirit is moving. All right, it's telling us. It's giving confirmation every which way but loose. All right. <laughs> so. They came out of their graves after the resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Well, back in those days, the holy city was Jerusalem. Nowadays, it's going to be New Jerusalem. They're going up into New Jerusalem, and then we which are alive and remain are caught up to follow them up. We're going to be caught up to be with them. That's where we are. Brothers and sisters, the, the, the 16th, which is Sunday, Easter Sunday, a couple days from now. Let's see, today's what? Thursday? One, two, three. Remember, after the Sabbath. Remember this. The Sabbath is Saturday. After the Sabbath. The morrow after the Sabbath is when you wave the barley. The barley has already been brought into the, the temple over there in Israel. And I saw a uh, 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 video today with uh, Rabbi Haim Lichtman or whatever his name is. I can't think of his name. But he does the institute, you know, the uh, Israeli institute there. Um, uh, anyway, I can't remember. They, they've already bought the barley. They've done the thing of the barley and they're making the cake and everything with the with the oil and the, and the myrrh. And then that's supposed to be offered up, okay? The wave offering doesn't come until Sunday, right? After the, after the Sabbath, all right? So... Their Sunday is going to happen seven hours ahead of our Sunday, which means that we're probably going to be sleeping in, in uh, Saturday night sometime, maybe early in the morning. And during those day, you know, during their Sunday, and that's what I'm going by, the J Jerusalem time, <laughs> we're out of here. I'm, I am convinced that this is the time, brothers and sisters. It, you know, as many times as I said this is it, I hear those words coming back in my ears, not anymore. I hear it like, yes, proclaim it. This is the time. And whether, even if we're here past first fruits, what it might seem like, maybe that's the idea of wait for it. It'll surely happen. It's for the appointed time. Maybe it's a couple days late. So don't kill the messengers if it's not exactly on that feast day. But I believe it is because of the type and shadow, okay? That's what we need to understand. If we're going to watch, let's be excited and watch. And if we're going to be dismayed a little bit, okay. But it, dismayed a little bit is not stopping watching. Dismayed a little bit is like, okay, it didn't happen, but what are we looking for? We're looking to go. We're looking to be out of here. This is the Jubilee year. There's not one more Jubilee year allowed. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. All right. Leviticus 25, 9 and 10. All right, liberty, proclaiming liberty in the land. That's what's going on now. This is the very first month, Nissan. All right, brothers and sisters, I'm just I'm beside myself with with um, belief. All right, I'm, I'm, I seem like I'm outside of my body. I really do. I seem like I'm I'm here, but I'm not really here. I'm kind of already in heavenly places. I'm already getting little glimpses of heaven somehow. You know, I'm not telling you that I'm seeing golden uh, streets, but I'm telling you that I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling like it's all around me. It's going to be all of a sudden, it's going to be there. All right? And we're going to be there. And we're going to be with Jesus. And that's all I can... Doesn't that all we really want? That's what we want. We want to be with Jesus. The rest will work its way out. You know, this is just... Right now, it's looking at the scriptures to give us indication of, you know, how this is coming to pass and, and how it's fulfilling a timeline. We're not going to be taken by surprise, brothers and sisters. This is not a surprise party, as my sister uh, in Blue Heaven, uh, uh, Gigi, what she said. It's not a surprise party. We're not going to be taken by surprise. 
This is the whole thing with the wise virgins trimming their lamps and going out. It's a, it's a, it's an action that it's required of you in your heart. Go out to meet him. Don't sit back and go, well, I've been watching these videos and eh, maybe, maybe not, you know. Uh, go out to meet him. Go out. All right. Bring. Let your heart. Let your light shine, all right? Going out doesn't necessarily mean physically walking out the door and going somewhere. It, it means your heart is lifted up. Your light is shining. You're waiting for the absolutely the coming of the king, all right? If I were bridegroom, all right? As the bride, it's, you know, I'm a man, so I don't feel comfortable saying that I'm a bride. But I'm part of that, what's considered the bride, his body, body of Christ so this is all amazing all right anyway to make a little bit uh, 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 a somewhat long video a little shorter but a little longer <laughs> just a little longer give me another five minutes or so so if we're raptured on the first day of first fruits which is when Jesus was uh, resurrected and the dead in Christ came out of the tombs went into the city all right all right if that happens then we have a 40-day period that will walk this earth and do greater things than he did, is what he told us. You'll do greater things than, than, than I did, he says. All right. That means we'll be walking the earth like he did for 40 days in our glorified bodies during the transition time where everything that's been maybe moved and wrecked by, by an earthquake, all right, all out of kilter and people missing and all that, all right, we'll be able to appear and do great wonders and signs and, and miracles for that 40 days. It won't be miracles to us because it'll be normal in the kingdom of God, right? So, but the interesting thing is that if you count, what happens is it comes to May the 25th. If you count from 16th of April to May 25th. Why is that important? That's Resurrection Day. Resurrection Day, what happens on Resurrection Day? Well, we're taken out, correct? All of a sudden, we've been here for 40 days. All of a sudden, we're removed, okay? We're removed, at, not all of a sudden, but at the end of the 40 days, we're removed. Okay, time to go, guys. See you, Earth, and we go up into the clouds, okay? That's the thought. The Bible clearly says in Revelation 2.10 that some of you will have tribulation 10 days, all right? That's important to read. So here it is. Fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. He's saying some of you. All right? Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. That's talking about, right there in that context, talks about that 10 days, he that overcomes in that 10 days. All right? So I want you to read that. I don't know who this is. Hold on with me because I can't pause this. Mark Walding. I'm doing a, I'm doing a video right now. I'm going to put you on speaker. I'm putting you on speaker. I'm just finishing up. So hold on one second. All right, you on speaker? Call me the echo, okay? All right, this is Sister Mary on the, on the phone, on the speaker here. And I'm just finishing up the video, so I, she called me, another watchman on the wall in the body of Christ, and I love her dearly. Hello, Sister Mary, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you, Daniel. All right, good. So just speak a little clearly if you're going to speak, okay? But I was just finishing up the video and pointing to the time that if we're here, if we're raptured on first fruits on the 16th of April, you count 40 days that puts you at May the 25th. May the 25th is Resurrection Day. Resurrection Day leaves you 10 days before the first day of um, Shavuot. Shavuot being June the 4th, that's the first day, and the 5th being the second day. Notice 50 years earlier, the 50 days uh, from June the 50 years from June the 5th was the Sixth Day War. And it's the second day of Shavuot, which is the Feast of Weeks, which is the 70th Feast of Weeks that has been fulfilled. So, as we walk this earth for 40 days, at that point, on May 25th, we would be taken out 
just like Jesus caught up into the clouds, we're leaving the same way that he left. And at that point, 10 days starts, and that's the Revelation 2.10 that I just read. Some of you will have tribulation 10 days, but be faithful unto death. That's right to the very end. And at that last day, the 10th day, puts you on June the 4th. June the 4th, 2017. Also, the end of the Daniel 70th week prophecy, that Shabuah, that Feast of Weeks, is, is fulfilled. Leaving 1-7, you're in the beginning. Not, you know, the 10th day is the 4th of June. That's the first day of the tribulation. So, brothers and sisters, I have my sister here on the phone, but I'm going to finish the video. And I just want to thank you all, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the heavens. And looking forward to... Uh, uh, seeing how uh, uh, we all, uh, uh, you know, have this party. We're going to have a great old party. We get to we get there in the heavenlies with Jesus. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> we're going to be unified. There's not going to be any bickering. No one's saying, I was right, you were wrong. There's none of that. We're just going to be with Jesus. Just look forward to that. And that's about to happen. And get excited. Be expecting and look forward to it. If you're dismayed a little bit, if it doesn't happen... Don't worry. We don't have that much longer. Seven weeks ain't nothing. You could do that standing on your head. All right? If we're here the whole time of the, of the barley harvest, let's say. But I don't think we have that much longer. So that's why I'm making the video. And I just want to tell you that and bring that message to you. Tell you to be, you know, ready in your heart. Prepare your heart and be right. Be ready. Have your lamps trimmed in Jesus' name. And your brother John that loves you, signing off. This could be my last video because I'm not making one most likely unless there's something major, okay, uh, that happens. So, Brother John, watchman for that great day. God bless you all. Out.